Hi, I'm Rick Smith. Thank you for purchasing the Plain Stick. You know, so many of my students, after a lesson or even just during their own practice, they never practice correctly. And until now, you now have a practice learning station that will help you with so many different elements when you're on your own. I think it's important for you to learn to be your own teacher. Bottom line is this, the swing plane is one of the most important things and misunderstood things in golf. You're going to have a better understanding of what your swing's like and how you can make your swing much more improved later on in the show as we identify with some of your swing problems that you have. As you can see, the plane stick is extremely portable. In fact, you can use this at home or when you go to the practice tee, you basically put it on the ground, take it out of the bag, and open up the cross section like so. It's very important to set up the plane stick correctly. As you can see, there is a string alignment that should be going to your target. We, knew, we want it going directly to the target. You can see when I'm outside, I can use a tee and put it in the end of the string. Now, what I'd like to do from this standpoint is then straddle the plane stick, get into position, and put the club head to where the string is going right through the center of the club face. Now, with your right hand, you want to go ahead and take hold of, of the plane adjustment, and this is kind of the shaft rod plane that we talk about. And now I'm going to still assume the proper address position. Hands are in the correct spot. My body is postured correctly. And you reach over with your right hand like this, and you adjust it to the shaft that you have in your hand. And here I have a six iron. Now, if I had a driver, obviously it would be on a little different, a little flatter plane with a wedge, a little bit more of a vertical plane. But here in this case, my six iron is here. I now telescope this out to where this is about an inch above the top of the grip. Now what I'm going to do is come back down. I know it's in the same line and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and turn this to the right and lock it in and I'm also going to lock this in here so that the plane does not move. It's important to tee the golf ball out in front of the string. You can see this because now since we've confirmed the shaft angle lie with my six iron at this case, I want to find out exactly where the width of my arc is. And what I mean by that is that once you get set up to it, you want to be able to get your stance and your body posture, let your arms hang down, and from here you want to feel like your hands and your arms and your chest are working back together without a lot of lower body motion. Now what you're going to do is get to a point where you've met the hosel. Now in this case you can see that I'm not at my hosel, so this is, I'm a little bit too close to this. Now, I don't want to tee it up over here either because now I've got to overextend myself to get there and that would be overextending your width. So let's go ahead and, and put this in the right spot and let's seek exactly where that perfect takeaway would be. Not only is it an on-plane takeaway, but you can see now it's met at the hosel and that's a critical issue from this standpoint of setting up the plane stick. Again, you can see the hands and the arms and the chest are working back. You can see the toe of the club is opening up slightly as it meets the hosel. Now you've established the width of your arc. You've established the shaft angle plane. Let's go hit some balls. To have a good on-plane takeaway, it's important that the shoulders are parallel to the target line. Very important for you, especially if you're a slicer. What I'd like to make a point about, too, is that when you take the club back, we see faulty takeaways. We see a takeaway where one person has said, you know, you need to make a good turn. You need to work the club more on the inside. Well, what happens is you go well below the plane stick here, and all of a sudden you've overturned your upper body. Arms are very, very behind you. You go into a lift, and all of a sudden you slice worse. The more you hit the ball to the right, the, the more you think that if you make your turn to the inside that you're going to have the power to send the ball and hit a draw. Well, it happens in reverse. The body over-rotates, the arms get away, and here comes this glancing blow from the club head of the golf ball. You wonder why you can't release the club. That's a big reason. Other people do this. They take the club back, and they'll get into a setup, and their arms will work out away from the body as they fix to the old backswing. Well, from here, you don't make that Freddie Couples reroute and bring the club down on plane. You end up just chopping down severely, getting rid of that slice, but now you hit poles and you hit big slices with your long club. So it's important to understand a couple things here. 
if you slice the golf ball, let's still have an on-plane takeaway where the hosel meets the plane stick. The wrist cock, the body turns back. Now, ideally, we want the club to track back down on plane and hit straight shots. But you know what? If you're a slicer, there's an old adage I use. You've got to go a mile to get an inch. And I want you to do this. When you're using this plane stick to get rid of your slice, in fact, I even want you to start off feeling as if the club head is going back. You can see that I'm even fractionally above the plane stick. Wrist cock body turns sufficiently gives me some room as I make my move to my left side, I'm going to feel that club head coming down well to the inside, and now I have one objective left, and that's to square the club face up this way. Now that's going to allow me to learn to hit a draw. If you want to hit a draw, you need to do that. Okay, now when we get back later in the golf swing, we're going to be talking about other players. We're going to be talking about players that hook the golf ball too much, and what you need to do as well. If you're having problems making a turn, just draw your right foot back, which should really benefit your shoulder turn and inside path. Another wonderful drill in avoiding the over-the-top tendency that we have is to pull the ball inside the target line a couple inches. And as you make swings, you're going to go ahead. We're going to call this more of the under-to-under -under drill, to where you're going back underneath the shaft plane and the plane stick, and then as you come down, you're going to come down and be underneath it. Now, if you come back over the top of it and hit this, don't worry about it, because this is not going to break your golf club. You can see that it's very flexible, but it's going to wake you up, and it's going to make you make a better downswing. So the under-the-under -under drill, basically under-back, under down is outstanding to achieve an on-plane draw type of a downswing. Now you can see the plane stick is now working on the forward swing and what we call this, this is a mirror image that we have on the back swing and the downswing. So you can see it's tilted and what I like to do is I set up and I use the string alignment and I put it in the center of my club face and I just make little back swings and I'll go through. I'll go back and through working on the proper circle that we want to make to hit straight shots. Now, granted, if you're a slicer, you do too much of this and you need to learn to extend and swing out and hit some draws. As you become better at that and you start drawing too much, well, we want to come back to the line and you can see that I have a great forward circle and it's an excellent exercise because I'm not manipulating the club face near as much once I perfect this motion. Sometimes it's nice to learn the swing from the target coming backwards, more of a downswing exercise. And what we see with most people that swing over the top, they end up swinging to the left of the target. Now if you did that too much, you'd end up hitting the plane stick. Now what this does, it really allows you to extend and to rotate and this is what you don't do. Even if you fix this downswing, a lot of times you spin, you over-rotate your hips, the arms come way back inside the body and you still hit your cut. So it's a great awareness. If you hit this, this really allows you to extend and rotate and drive the golf ball to your target better. Another anti-slice downswing, actually post-impact exercise, is one where if you're still swinging the club to the left too quickly through the ball, you can see my hands are to the left as well, and you don't want to do that. You want to extend and get the hand line going out more to the target, and that way you're not going to cut across the golf ball so much. So allow the hands to extend and go into your finish, and you're going to penetrate your golf ball flight a lot more through the wind and also to help you to draw the golf ball. Okay, you're an advanced player and you're having problems hitting the ball online. You hit it a big push or a hook and you keep fighting it time after time. You may hit the ball a long ways, but the tendencies that you have are what we call your two in to out coming down. And this, this is an excellent exercise. I'm going to place this tee on the two inches on the outside of the string 
and my rehearsal is going to be I'm going to go back on top of the plane stick, I'm going to make my turn and instead of dropping and sliding and work the club inside, I'm going to go ahead and work it back down on plane and you can see that I'm much more down the line and, and rotating forward here than I am sliding and working it on the inside. Another modification to using the plane stick for a perfect on plane backswing is to do this. You can actually hit a lot of golf balls this way. You place the golf ball, as I have here, another inch forward of where I've had it before. Now what this does, once I get into my setup and begin the takeaway, hands, arms, chest, going back, I want to feel like the bottom of my golf club is going to brush the plane stick going back. Now from here, I'm just going to go ahead and make my swing and I have all the freedom in the world. So what it's ensuring is the perfect toe up halfway back brushing which is what most of you don't do so it's a great drill for that another excellent exercise with the plane stick for the takeaway and the downswing as it relates to a player that drops their club down to the inside too much coming down hitting the block hitting the flip hook this is excellent this is also excellent for those of you that hit behind the ball from the inside this is excellent for that. Take a look at what I do. I get right up to the plane stick with my right leg and I'm going to address this to where the shaft is about two inches above the, the top of the plane stick. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to step about a foot away from the plane stick and as I swing back, I'm going to go ahead and swing back and come down. Now what this is going to do, it's going to really keep my swing shape the same going back and coming down. That's a very on-plane exercise and a tremendous one at that. Another variation from the last exercise is to take the plane stick and make it dead vertical, put it to the middle of the right foot, and then set up and go ahead and work on your takeaway. You can see that I'm not too in back. More importantly, I'm more on top of it coming down with the club working more down the line. It's not working on the inside. It's excellent exercise. I love using this drill because we see so many people either overturn their backswing. You can see how I've moved away from the plane stick here. Or I see people do this. They move to the side, which shifts the spine to the left. It's that dreaded reverse weight shift. So what you want to do is use this as a reference in either case for the backswing. We want to keep it stable and go back. You can see how I've kept the same space between my right pocket in the plane stick. On the forward swing, you're in a similar situation. The only difference is there is a little lateral move in the golf swing coming down as you're turning. So what I want you to do is put the plane stick, say if I turn my left foot out, put it at the ball of the foot, and go ahead and give yourself a chance as you get to the top. Feel like you're bumping to the left a little and then you're turning. And then what you're going to feel, you can turn through your golf ball. Now, on the other hand, if you're a slider and you slide too far, just get a little bit closer to it. So when you make your turn, you're going to go ahead and turn out of the way and you're not going to slide as much and you'll start to feel that. So you need to identify your swing problem, but again, it's very versatile in that case. A lot of people, when they swing back, they go back and they raise their heel and their knees overwork. And what I like about the plane stick, you can step into position, give yourself a little room, but you can see it's a couple inches inside my left heel. So when I go back, it works behind the ball a little bit, but it's not overactive. I think it's an excellent exercise to just get your lower body a little bit more stable. Now, as you come through, go ahead and push with your right and almost feel like you're going to push it forward towards the left leg. That's an excellent drill to start to get your lower body moving better. A lot of you go back to the top and you hang back and you never get your right side past the golf ball through impact. Excellent in both cases. If you're a player that has a tendency to pull away, lift off the heel a lot, what we do is put the plane stick right down on top of your left shoe. And from here, this will help you to keep it stable and down and then give you something much better to hit against. If you raise it a lot, sometimes it's hard to put it down in the same place. We see some great players have raised their heel in an effort to get more hip turn and to get their arms up. But if you're flexible enough, you don't have to worry about that. So keep this a little bit more stable and you should be in good shape.
you know, another thing that will help intimidate you a little bit from a positive perspective is that you can see I'm set up with a plane stick above my hands. And what it does, and a lot of times we see people pull away and all of a sudden their hands come in high. You can see that I may brush that a little bit and that's not the impact we want. We want to go ahead and keep our spine angle and swing underneath it. If that intimidates you a bit too much, just lower it down just a little bit and get the same sensation and turn without pulling away and then feeling as if you're going to hit the plane stick. But if you do hit it, it's not going to hurt you. When you're using the plane stick, the long version, make sure you step away from it and use it just for reference when you're shadowing your backswing and downswing. You can see here an excellent drill that I use a lot of times where if I'm set, I'm set up about 20, 15, 20 feet away from the plane stick. And what I'm going to do is mirror a backswing that goes back on this side of the plane stick and then I'm going to work it back down on the inside. This is excellent if you slice the golf ball and you're seeking a real simple creative way to feel that up and under feeling. An excellent drill. You can see I'm using two plane sticks, one with a long rod, one with a short. You can see that this is the shaft angle plane and this is my shoulder plane angle which is measured from the golf ball running just to the base of my neck. Now if you look at a great three-quarter drill where most people have problems, let's assume I'm making a good backswing to here. When I go to this point right here, you can see that I'm somewhere between the shaft angle plane and my shoulder plane angle. An excellent exercise to get the arms matched up to the body better on the downswing. A lot of you get here, a lot of you get over here, some of you get too vertical. So it gives you some, a sense of where the club should be here and then you can move through your golf ball. You can also work on your trajectory. I remember looking at Hogan. Hogan would stay closer to this plane and he'd hit lower shots. Watson or Nicholas would go back and then they'd go more up and they'd get the club more in an up position and come down a little steeper and work on a higher trajectory. You've got that flexibility to do that with these two plane sticks. With the long rod with the plane stick, you can see that this is right off my left eye. And one of my goals is to swing back, let the head swivel a little bit behind it and then as I come down, I can go ahead and move back to my address again. Now that's excellent for feeling turning back behind it. 